Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you why car payments are stupid. My name is Jeremy, this is Region Automotive, and let's get to work. Okay, so before we start off, I'm gonna show you how to calculate uh, per car payment, the amount of interest that you pay per payment, and then the amount that goes towards the principal uh, actually paying off the loan. And just because I say car payments are stupid doesn't necess necessarily mean that you're stupid for taking a car payment. I just wanna show you a little bit of exactly how a payment works, where the interest is going, and maybe it'll help you decide whether or not you want a car payment next time you're shopping for a car and a payment. And also, I would like to think that this information will help educate you next time you shop for a car payment. Before I start my calculations, I wanna pull a couple of average numbers off line online, off, online, off the internet uh, that we can use for our calculations. So I searched up the average car payment in America uh, for a used car, which is what we're going to calculate for. It's $525 a month. And then the interest rate for used cars is about 12%. And then the average new car loan term is nearly nearing 70 months. Uh, we're going to do five years for used car, so that'll end up being 60 months. If I plug those numbers into an auto loan calculator here, I'm reverse calculating first for the vehicle price to get my base number to work off of. So if we take our monthly payment of $525, loan term 60 months, interest rate 12%, uh, sales tax and all that stuff we won't consider. I know it's included here, but really the uh, numbers we need is the vehicle loan amount. So that's 23,000. I'll use 23,600 just for a round number. And then this calculator, which we're going to prove this number, I'll show you how to calculate this number. Uh, so your total of 60 loan payments is 31,500. Total loan interest is 7,900. Some of you have watched my last calculation videos. You know that I prefer to do my calculations on pencil and paper, and then I jump into the computer again to show you how they translate, I guess, or how they look in the computer. So anyway, uh, taking those numbers that we found online, so I calculate our monthly car, pay car payments, and I show you exactly what go into the car payment. So first we have our annual percentage rate, which is at 12% that we searched up, the annual average annual rate. Then we convert that into our monthly percentage rate because our payments are taken monthly, not yearly. So to do that, we simply divide by the number of months in a year, 12. So 12% 12 divided by 12 makes for easy math, 1%. And then we convert our monthly percentage rate into decimal form for our calculation. So we just have 1% uh, divided, or times by 1 over 100 divided by 100. Our payments are calculated monthly, so our interest is calculated monthly using that NPR. So our interest for month 1 is the initial loan amount of the car, so 23600 times our MPR, which is 0 0.01. So the interest that gets taken out of our payment month one, or our pay our interest, part of our payment that is interest after the first month is $236. So if we take that average payment that we used to get this number, so this number came from the 12% in this monthly payment. So if we take 525 minus 236, this number we just calculated our interest for month one, we have $289 left over that goes towards our principal, paying off the car. So then we go to our second month, amount owing after month one, I guess, once the payment is taken out. So this bit of interest goes to the bank, uh, the principal gets subtracted from our amount, so we have $23,600 minus $289, the principal. So then we're left with $23,311 owing on our loan. So come month two, we now have a smaller loan amount. So we have a different interest amount for month two. So then we take our remaining principal after our first payment, 23,311 times our monthly percentage rate, NPR, APR, annual percentage rate. Yep, that's right. Monthly percentage rate times 0 0.01. So then the interest going to the bank after our second payment, month two, is $233.11. So then we go back to our payment again, and we have $525. Our payment stays the same. The interest is a little bit less since our principal is a little bit less after our first payment. So then now our principal is 
or the amount that's going towards paying this $23,311 is $291.89. So we'll jump back into the computer and then I'll show you how to calculate that on a spreadsheet and you could see every single month how much is going towards interest and then how much is going towards principal based off this calculation. So now I have a fresh Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel if that's what you use and we will calculate uh, the interest. So I already pre-filled our months here uh, like we went, where was it? We chose 60 months instead of 70 months. Here's that rate, 12%. And then as a reminder, uh, 23,600 for even numbers for our vehicle loan amount. So that's where I did that manual calculation earlier. So first we're going to start with our remaining loan amount, which is our initial purchase amount, 23,600. And then we're going to calculate the amount of interest like we just did on the paper there. So I'm going to take some shortcuts, I guess, just for the sake of keeping my sheet clean. So I'm just going to go equals 12 divided by 12. So 1% um, like we showed there for easy math, 12% divided by 12 months in a year. So one divided by 100. So it gives us that 0 0.01 and then I'm going to multiply it by our remaining loan amount. So that gave us that $236 like we calculated calculated on paper for the first month. And then the principal amount, we took our payment equals 525, our payment that we found or searched up earlier, minus the interest amount, 236. So then we had this $289 that went to principal. This after the first month, uh, $236 of our $525 went to the bank for their interest, and then $289 gets subtracted from this amount to pay off the car. So then for our next remaining loan amount, I'm going to go equals this amount minus the principal we paid in the previous month. So then month two, I now have that $23,311. So I'm just going to repeat the calculation here. So that's where we got that Again, that 0.1 or 0 0.01, 1 over 100 times the remaining loan amount. And then I'm going to continue this calculation down here as well. So then that's the amount we're paying towards our principal, this guy here. So I'm going to drag this down. And now that's going to auto calculate that 23,311 minus this amount. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag all these down. Just bear with me for a sec. Okay, so we have those dragged all down. So we see throughout the months here. So like month six, for example, our loan amount is 22,125. And then our interest amount is 0 0.01. So it's just gonna be this number essentially with some removed decimal places, I guess. Uh, and then our principal amount is slightly higher than the last month because our interest is slightly lower than the last month, which is at $303. So we take this 22,125, subtract 303, and that gives us our loan amount for the next month. So if we go all the way through the whole term, you'll see how our loan is shrinking, our interest towards our payments are shrinking, and then our principal amount is increasing until the loan gets paid off. So again, that's why they say interest is front heavy because here, uh, the amount of our payment is almost half that's going to the interest and then the other half is going towards paying the loan off. And then near the end of the loan, we have, what is that, $72. So it's about a sixth of our loan payment going towards interest and then the other five-sixths is going towards the actual payment until the loan is paid off. So if I take the sum of the interest equals sum, Google Smart, it, calc or it assumed what we're going to do. Some of the interest, so that's where we get that number. Uh, Seventy after sixty months, five years, you bought a car for twenty three thousand six hundred. You paid seventy nine hundred dollars towards interest, so almost half of the value of the car over five years, just to pay off that car. Like that's essentially you're paying the bank, saying thank you, Mr. Bank, for lending me twenty three thousand six hundred. I'm going to give you eight thousand dollars over five years to give me that amount of money. And then that actually is this exact number here, 7,898.60. Uh, so yeah, we just proved, given the payment, given the number of months, given the interest rate, this calculator told us the initial uh, amount. So then we took that initial amount to prove these numbers, I guess, and then, or to prove this number using these numbers. So uh, there's that $8,000 that were given to, the, to Mr. Bank there. 
for being such a nice guy to lend us that money. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you while we're in the Google Sheet here is uh, at how I mentioned at the start of the video, we're gonna consider the depreciation, which also is a factor when you're buying any car. So after year zero, essentially when you're starting with the loan amount or the car, our car value is 23,600. So after one year of driving, it's approximately lost 15% in value. So to do that, I'm gonna go equal this guy times one minus 15%. Whoops, not that. One minus 15%. So then our after one year of driving, our car is worth approximately $20,000. $60. So I'm going to drag this down the next year. That's going to drop another 15%. Maybe. Uh, before times. Okay. Yeah. So that's one minus G3. So G3 is this guy here. So it's also trying to go to the lower cell. We're, so we're just going to do one minus uh, 0.15. So then after... Uh, two years of driving, our car is now worth $17,051, go all the way down. So at the end of five years of driving, we've also lost half of its value. So it's now worth $10,471. So in this case, actually, uh, as because of our used car value and quote unquote relatively low interest rate at 12%, uh, we don't get a situation where you're upside down, but you could come close. So say if your uh, interest rate was a lot higher, um, then yeah, your interest amount would be like, say if you had a rate of like, I don't know, 15% or something, uh, 20%, then your interest or amount, like for the first bit would almost be the whole payment. So let's say at year two here, uh, 24 months, your remaining loan amount is 16,168. Uh, year two, the car is worth approximately $17,000. So you're pretty much paying off the car as it depreciates as well, which is kind of a sobering thought is that like, you've made all these payments after two years. You're like, Kate, I want to sell my car, you know, get some cash, buy a used car. Oh, sorry. Your car is only worth $17,000. So you're pretty much keeping up with the depreciation of the value on your, on your, uh, car payment. And then another thing to consider, so we've paid close to $8,000 uh, of interest to the bank. And then after five years, you've lost approximately, what is that, $13,000. So you have 8,000 plus 13, which is $21,000. So yeah, that's the reality. That's why I'd say it's financially dumb because after five years, having a used car that you bought for 23,600 has cost you $8,000 in interest and $10,000 in depreciation. Yeah, after five years, uh, you've paid like $20,000 over those five years and then you can sell a car for $10,000. So that's why I say it's financially stupid to finance a car. All right, guys, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully that's informative. Again, I don't think you're stupid for taking a car payment, but a lot of people don't consider all these numbers when they take a car payment. So hopefully you watch this video, hopefully it educates you a little bit, and then hopefully it makes you think twice before you take that next car payment. So with all that being said, what's my suggestion if you need a new car to either keep driving that, driving that paid off car, although you may be putting repairs into it, it seems like you're quote unquote wasting money. I just showed you how you could waste a lot more money with a new car payment. A lot of people justify like, oh, my car's broken down, gotta get a new car. Well, you see how much that new car is costing you over five years. So A, you can either just, you know, keep putting repairs into your current paid off car or drive your paid off car and then save up the equivalent of a car payment amount over a year or two and buy a used Honda for like eight or 10 grand. And if you're wondering how you buy used Honda for eight or 10 grand, well, you're gonna have to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know down below if you'd like to see that video. Thanks for watching, guys.